Are 22 year olds trustworthy? No man is trustworthy. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> uh, just trust that they got money. That's all you need to trust in. They got money. I don't believe in submitting to them. Unless it's submitting my bills to them so they can pay them. So apparently there's a giant genre of content on TikTok that seeks to give people dating advice. And I would venture to say that some of this dating advice isn't great advice, a little toxic, if you will. You got a little taste of that in the video you just watched. Now, Vox writer Rebecca Jennings decided to dig deep and see what kind of conversations are being had, what kind of videos are being produced on TikTok in regard to dating advice. Now, before we get any further, though, we do need to make one thing very clear. Jennings's piece spends a lot of time on what female content creators are telling their female audiences. So that's why we're gonna be focusing mostly on that in this story. And we're gonna cover a lot of that in this segment, but we are not trying to imply that this is a one-sided thing. We're just focusing on what this Vox reporter reported on. Jenk, go ahead. Yeah, and I view those things as a different sides of the same coin, right? So Andrew Tate in a lot of ways release for men and cathartic for men. And, uh, that are frustrated by women, etc. And this is the reverse for women that are frustrated by men, etc. At least she's funny because I love when she has things as sprinkle, sprinkle. I still don't know what it means, but I like it. I'm amused by it. Yeah, I, sure. I, sprinkle, sprinkle is fun. I would have enjoyed that in a different context. I, I don't like the whole all oh, men are only good for paying my bills narrative. Of course, it's, yeah, it's super terrible. toxic. It's, yeah. it's toxic and I think that for anyone who might take that advice seriously, and I hope they don't, you're actually cutting yourself off from a lot of really great guys out there who, like the whole, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm like totally deluded. But I thought that the whole point of being in a relationship is you, you work towards something together. Right, you grow together. So I'll get to all of that in just a moment. But um, let's 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 give you some other examples. So um, here are a few of the titles on um, the YouTube streams from one of these content creators, uh, Shira Seven. Um, so she puts out dating advice, and some of the titles are "How to Get Him to Spend His Money on You," <laughs> "Do Not Entertain Broke Men," "75 Places to Find Wealthy Men." Okay. Um, Okay. Okay, I I don't know. I like I really really enjoy independence and I really enjoy being able to buy myself what I want. Yeah, so look, on the one hand, I get that it's cathartic and kind of raw, honest, funny in a sense. On the other hand, again, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Of course it's toxic because guys, it's not just toxic about men. It's toxic towards women in the long run. Why? Because if your whole thing is I'm gonna use my looks to get a man to pay for things. But what happens when you get older? And so if you're and if you're relying everything to based on your looks and you're not building anything for yourself, you're also depriving yourself of a sense of purpose, which is so much more satisfying and fulfilling rather than chasing some other guy and then being dependent on him. That's a disastrous idea. Also, if all you're going for is what is he gonna buy me? How much money does he have? Well then, I mean, look, it's it's not like you get those things for free, right? So if you're gonna have to, what, be intimate? Like with someone that you might not really be into because they're buying you presents? Yeah, I, it sounds I, disastrous it to me. It does, but, it really but, does. And, and one more thing about that, guys, think about how the relationship unfolds. If that's how you got into the relationship, you think that you guys are gonna do some bonding and sharing and grow together? No, it's just a transaction. So the whole time, the whole thing is disingenuous, it's gonna suck. All you're gonna do is fight, you're gonna lead a miserable life. For what? For money, but what is the money for? To make your life better, but did it make it better? No, you're in a miserable relationship exactly. that you set up for yourself that was self-defeating. So I wanna give you some other examples. Rebecca Jennings in her Vox piece also writes that a scroll through the hashtags dating advice, dating coach, and dating expert will reveal hundreds of these authorities with many lauding their credentials, a BS in psychology, for example, to spew advice for heterosexual singles. Some simply read self-help books from the 90s and 2000s to their followers, favoring titles like why men love bitches, 
the rules and men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Some of these books have become so popular on TikTok, they've returned to the bestseller lists decades after they were first published. They'll tell women not to chase the man or sleep with him too early, to lose weight before they start dating, that your silence is your strength. So that's the other thing, right? The yeah. advice about women and how they they need to be meek, they need to be, you know, um, quiet and agreeable. But I I give men a little more credit than that because not all men are into that. I, like my husband wasn't into that. My husband was into who I am as a person. Yeah. Not meek. Not meek at all, okay. yeah. So guys, I mean, first of all, as a woman, if that's the advice you're following, what a boring life. You totally. have to just sit there and shut up the whole time. Then what are you doing with your life? Where's the fun part? Okay, Oh, I have a Gucci bag, but I have to shut up my whole t the whole time. It's and, and be pretend to be meek and weak. Okay, but I, I actually think just as big a problem is the men that look for that are incredibly weak. That they can't share and then get something back from their partner and grow from it, and 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 so they all they want is a partner who just listens to them babble on and doesn't speak out. That guy's kind of pathetic. Well, and so if that's the guy you're looking for, you're looking for disaster. Also. This is all very confusing, a lot of contradictions, right? So on one hand, it's ladies, ladies, don't be disagreeable, you need to be meek. But also, why men love bitches? <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> so which one are, you, are we going for here? Look, I think the best thing you can do, and I know that this sounds super cheesy and cliche, but it's literally true, is be yourself. Because whoever you do end up with, whoever you join a, a union with, you're going to have to live with them for the rest of your life. So what are you going to do? Pretend like you're someone you're not for the rest of your life? You can't hide that forever, right? And so you want to be comfortable in your own skin. You want to come home to someone who really jives with you. You guys mesh well together. You guys are building a life together. And by the way, that's the other thing. Don't downplay how awesome it is to share your life with someone. It's freaking awesome, right? But it's only awesome if the relationship begins from an honest place and you're not hiding your power level. You're not hiding who you really are and, and you're being honest with your potential partner. So the reason to be yourself is, there's a second reason is um, you're gonna find a better match that way. Because if you're pretending to be someone else, you're gonna find someone who likes someone else. Yes. Okay, if you're just being you, you're gonna find someone who might like you. And you can be someone else to trick a guy or to trick a woman for a set period of time. But eventually you get exhausted and you revert to being back to being yourself. And then you set yourself up for disaster because the person picked you thinking that you were a different person. It's gonna be nonstop conflict. So why do this to yourself? Just and and maybe the answer is to get a slightly richer husband or a slightly hotter wife or whatever these stereotypes are, right? But again, what difference does that make if you're miserable the whole time? Yeah, um, so I'm gonna give you another example. Let's go to graphic five. Dating advice from uh, Sadia Khan, a Pakistani television actress and psychologist is all over TikTok. Um, the TikTok dating advice circuit, shaming women who don't dress modestly or who post sexy pictures of themselves. The girl who's doing OnlyFans, these men are not going to come to your funeral. No one's gonna care, she says in one video. And look, there are men who aren't into that, right? They, they don't wanna date women who are putting out sexy content on OnlyFans. Some dudes are a little more liberally minded when it comes to that stuff. Again, it really comes down to being yourself and attracting a partner who likes you for who you are rather than, you know, wanting to be with someone else that you're presenting yourself as. Um, so other gross and all too common talking points is that men only care about sex and aren't capable of platonic uh, friendships. Let's take a look at that. Ladies, here's something a man will never admit to your ass. We have secret crushes at work. Also, when we have friends who's a female, they're not actually our friends. Men don't have friends who are females. That friend is someone he's previously slept with, or he's currently sleeping with, or he's trying to sleep with. Don't get that twisted. If you are a pretty woman who have male friends, they're just waiting for their chance to attack. I'm a man, I wouldn't know. I mean, this is a classic case of thinking that everyone else is just like you. You might be like that, but it doesn't mean that every guy, I mean, I have 
tons of guy friends and a lot of them are married, have wonderful families, super happy in their relationships. You can totally find platonic um, like hetero friendships. Yeah, so this was a mixed bag. So that's definitely true. And when I had platonic relationships in college and stuff, my guy friends would be like, oh, yeah, 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 well, you're interested. I'm like, no, I'm really not. We have like really good conversations about philosophy, religion, science, etc. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that, that's how they talk. Yeah, yeah actually, kind of. <laughs> okay, with my friends. Um, so, so of course you can have platonic relationships. Of course you could actually care about another human being, whether they're male or female, attractive or not attractive, based on what they're saying rather than what they look like. Now, having said that, women are a little bit naive, and and so like if you're in high school, college, especially with younger men, right? And you think, oh no, all of these people are just my friends. No, most of them are trying to sleep with you, okay? Yeah. So keep it real on that, so it's a mixed bag. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence, and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.